Nous ne pouvons pas accepter dans notre pays des femmes prisonnières derrière un grillage, coupées de toute vie sociale, privées de toute identité. Ce n'est pas l'idée que la République française se fait de la dignité de la femme. We now have a situation, and this is a personal view, where people who walk, can walk into a bank or any other secure area in a burqa and remain unquestioned about it. And now, the presenter of Insight, Jenny Brocky. Hi, thanks for joining us. Last week, the French Senate decided to ban the wearing of face coverings in public. It follows similar moves in other European countries and cities. The vote in France was overwhelming. Of 343 senators, 246 voted in favour of the ban, only one voted against and the rest abstained. There have been calls here too for a banning of the burqa, with private members' bills being introduced in two states, but they're not gaining much political traction. Both the Prime Minister and the opposition leader described the burqa as confronting, though they've ruled out a ban. So let's talk about why people find the burqa confronting and why France is taking such a strong position. You can join in, as always, via Facebook and Twitter, and I think a pretty fierce uh, debate is underway on Facebook already, so do join in if you can and tweet to us as well. Uh, let's go to Paris first. Jacques Millard in Paris. You're a member of the French government. You've been a key figure in pushing for this ban in France. What are the penalties going to be for wearing the burqa or the niqab or for making someone wear it in a public place in France in the future? First of all, I'm a member of the National Assembly, not the government, even if I push, as is true, uh, to have such a ban in France. Uh, I was the first one to propose a ban in 2006. At the time, you know, uh, I did not get much support. But to face a, a mounting, a mounting phenomenon, uh, the, the president, as we have seen in the beginning of this uh, broadcast, has said that uh, the burqa or the nihab uh, are not welcome in France. I think this uh, violates our, uh, let's say, deep soul as uh, behavior in, uh, in our republic. We are a secular state, and uh, I will see many reasons to ban it. First of all, equality of sex. I can't understand why men, uh, only women, uh, will wear such clothes. Secondly, this is dignity of women. Thirdly, of course, there is a question of security. But you know, uh, I think that in our history, never, never, we had uh, people hiding their face uh, behind something, a cloth. As Madame Banater, who is a feminist uh, supporter, you know, she has been uh, combating for years and years for equality of sex, and she said to us in the mission, the, when we study the phenomenon, that never in our history, and this is true, in Europe, in France, there has been a clause for your face. And I will tell you something. I think uh, when some people say we are stigmatizing a religion, we are stigmatizing a woman who are wearing uh, such clothes, uh, I'm sorry, I am the victim. I am the victim because those people refuse me to see their face, to communicate with them. And I think this violates the common will to live together, especially in our society where women are on equal footing to men in every sphere of the Republic. All right, I'm going to come back to, to the question I asked you about penalties in a moment. But before I do, I'd like to uh, talk to some of our guests here. Amina, um, you're 22. You wear the burqa here in Australia. Uh, do you understand how a Western country could see it as a symbol of inequality, that well, women are, are being forced to cover their faces? It's not for the West or anyone else for that matter to decide what's inequality. Our religion has given us um, equality. Um, it's not for him or Cory Bernardi or Fred Nile to tell us we are oppressed or um, wrong is being done to us. We chose to wear this. So, no, I don't understand where the West is coming from. OK, you only decided to wear it a year ago, though, didn't you? Um, slightly more than a year. OK, why? Because uh, it's in submission to Allah, the Creator, and to emulate, to copycat the wives of the Prophet. They also wore it. Hmm. So, religious reasons? I mean, what are the other reasons that you wear um, it? There is no other reason, actually. I wore it simply and only because 
I believe it's the right thing to do. It's an act of worship. Um, it's in submission to Allah and it's, and it's emulating the wives of the Prophet and the female companions that were around at that time. Mm. I know, um, Ahmed, you had reservations about Amina wearing it though. You didn't particularly want her to, did you? No, I did. You Actually, did? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Yes, I, thought, I, I thought you weren't so sure. No, no, no. I was sure, yeah. Um, when I went to see her in marriage, um, she told me that this is what I wear and uh, you know, I wear the burqa, and I, I asked her, do you always wear the burqa, or are you just wearing it now, you know what I mean? Maybe from shyness. No, she said she always wears the burqa. And that was like a condition for her, and that's what I was looking for as well in marriage. A girl with, uh, that wears the burqa. Okay, I think so I we got agreed confused. on that. I think your brother was the one with <coughs> reservations, that's yes? Right. Who's the brother? Yes, yes. yes. And what were your reservations? No, the thing is, uh, it's not up to me, or up to anyone else to decide on this matter, this, it's up to her to decide. Now, we just voiced our opinion for his own safety. Now, because we are kind of worried about his safety in this country, and yeah. it happened to be that uh, we feel like there's, at the moment, there is, and everyone will agree on this, that there is a hostility towards Muslim in particular. Now, Muslims are being picked on because of their holy book, because of their religion, because of now we're talking about the way their women are dressed up. So now, you were worried it would single her out? In, in, yeah, it in, singles her out and she'll be picked on just because the way she's dressed up. Okay, up, yeah. Tariq Ramadan in Doha, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. You're an Islamic scholar. You were advising French lawmakers uh, against a ban on the burqa? Why? Look, because I, I think that uh, whatever is your position on, on this issue, you have to try to find solutions and not to create a problem. Because what Jacques Mia was saying right now is just to, to speak about some position and forgetting the political context in, in France. In fact, the reality of it is that this is a pretext for some populist party and even the president to push on the, the right side uh, of the political spectrum to get more support. And this is only uh, a question for a few hundred uh, women, and they are creating a whole issue, six months of discussion on something which is not the essential uh, problem that we have now. My position on this is that as an Islamic scholar, I don't think that this is an Islamic obligation. I think it was only for the Prophet's uh, wife, and this is one position, but I cannot deny the fact that some scholars are thinking that this is the right uh, Islamic position. So with this, it's a religious position, my, my, the, the way I'm dealing with this is quite clear. It's up to the women to decide what they want to do. Now, if we want to find a solution, it's not by banning the, the woman from being in the street. And if we ca it comes to uh, uh, what is an important point here, it's a que question of security. No woman wearing the burqa or wearing the niqab, because the right word is niqab, covering the face, would uh, disagree or refuse just to take it off when there is a question of security. It never happens. So they are creating a question of security where there is no problem and they are trying to use this as something which is a political discussion and creating a, 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 a kind of a, a controversy around a, a symbol which at the end of the day is the real problem. The real problem is this one. The new visibility of Western Muslims in Western society is a problem for some politicians and some trends within the society. And this is what we have to talk about. This new visibility is not a threat for the West. Okay, it's we'll, just we'll the reality of Muslims living in this country. OK, we'll get on to that a little bit later on uh, tonight. But Jacques Mia, just a quick response from you to that. Well, first of all, um, you know, this is nothing to do with the extreme right party. This is something which shock very deeply the French soul, manner, uh, and customs, you know. Uh, we um, experience this as a kind of violation against the common will we have together. Because contrary to what uh, Tariq just said, mosque in France has been admitted since 1920. You know, the Paris mosque has been built by the French states to thanks the Muslims who have been battling during the First World War. And we have many